Nitro is not your friend. It's the greatest show in motorsports, and you got a front row seat here on Cycle Track. Top Fuel Motorcycle, here we go. We welcome you to the final qualifying session for Top Fuel Motorcycles here at the Fuel Tech Man Cup Final, South Georgia Motorsports Park, presented to you by 190hookup.com and MTC, all the way from Tokyo, Japan. It is Reggie Sato on his Nitro Funny Bike Harley Davidson. He will take on the defending Man Cup champion, Mitch Brown. Guys, this is going to be epic. It is really cool down here in South Georgia. We could see some really strong numbers. Mitch ran a career best here at 598 last year en route to winning his championship title. Won the Norwalk Knight under fire earlier this year. He's looking to keep that big number one on the back of this 1500 horsepower machine. Right now we got a good old fashioned four cylinder versus two cylinder battle. You never know what's gonna happen in top fuel with this much horsepower. Enjoy your front row seat, all the speed, thrill, fails, and everything in between. We're gonna take this all the way till the end till we crown a champion. Stay with us all throughout this video from South Georgia Motorsports Park. It's go time. Here we go, Mitch will fire first. His starting line procedure takes much longer. Fuel Harley versus Import. You may want to grab a snack for this one. By the way, let me know in the comments, what do you like to eat or drink while watching Cycle Drag? Enjoy. the Mitch but score one for Team Harley. Top Fuel is so volatile you never know what's going to happen. Like I said a real challenge to get that much horsepower to the racetrack. Nonetheless this is wild. This is crazy. Give these guys a share. And here comes the talented veteran out of Alabama Chris Hand. This is a very tough break for Chris Hand, a veteran who's been doing this nearly four decades. They were late arriving. They did have some problems with their motorhome. This sport is so incredibly expensive, and this team is reaching a point where they're having trouble keeping up with the finances, but we certainly appreciate them being here. Let's hope Chris can get qualified. He's a wonderful racer, but unfortunately, it looks like they're gonna have to back it off. What is wrong with this motorcycle? You can see the frustration by Chris. He's a five-second club member. Elmer Trett tuned him to his first six-second run over the phone. That's how long Chris has been doing this with his lovely wife, Sharon. 
Tough break for Team Chris Hand. Not exactly sure Just what happened. Get on the stand, see if you guys can fix it. I'll let you go behind the next pair. Here comes Walter Halnowski, and if you remember from our coverage from Gainesville, we found out Walter is also a very talented musician. Look at him go. He can strum. And the bass guitarist lay down a strong number on this pro fuel Hartley Davidson. Top end of the racetrack, he goes 796. Thank Johnny G, that's looking smooth. Yeah, he cleared her right up, man. She stumbled the first couple times, but he's got her now. Good job, guys. Team LSR looking strong. Well, guys, you never know what's going to happen in Top Fuel Motorcycle. Like I said, attrition, a big factor here. These things eat parts. It is so hard just to keep them running consistently. And we got a mega matchup coming up. It'll be Sam Wills taking on Dave Vantine. A true battle of the Titans coming up. The veteran Sam Wills out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And this man, who you have to believe has a psychological advantage, having gone nearly two tenths quicker than the rest of the field. This is Dave Vantine out in New York. Gets his motors done at the shop of Larry Spider-Man McBride. He has been on a tear, but there's been one problem for this team. Occasionally, this motorcycle has had a tendency to drive left. That's been a real bugaboo. Hopefully, it's not an issue here this weekend. Let's find out in final qualifying. Sammy up in smoke. Dave on a pass. Oh no, Dave drifting left, crosses the center line. This is what we feared. What happened? What went wrong? Let's check with the team. Not what I wanted to see right now. Well, Greg seemed like a real good leave. Just I don't know, Jack. I just don't know, buddy. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, left foot straight. Just did a little bit at the beginning. Wow. I told you these monsters are unpredictable. They are volatile. And that is not the way that Dave Vantine wanted to end his qualifying day. But the good news for him, it's not going to end race day. That's been a bit mystifying for Team Vantine. They have had a problem drifting left. Normally that comes when they're in the left lane. This is the first time I've seen them drift left from the right lane. Not exactly sure what's going on. You could tell by the perplexing look on the crew's faces. They don't know either. They'll take it back to the pits and try to figure this thing out for eliminations. The crowd loving this show. I hope you are too. Let's get to eliminations. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Great job, great job, great it job. It is Championship Sunday Cycle Drag. We're back here at South Georgia Motorsports Park, the biggest drag bike race of the year. Top fuel at the ready. Let's get it on. Pop your popcorn, sit back and relax. We got a show.
in a very intriguing first matchup. We know a Harley will go to round two because it's Walter Halnowski on the Pro Fuel Harley taking on Reggie Sato on the Nitro Funny Bike all the way from Tokyo, Japan. Now, anything can happen in top fuel. Yes, Walter has one of the slower bikes in the category, but that doesn't mean he's out of it, guys. These bikes can smoke the tire at any point. Don't count anyone out in top fuel. Is it the day David slays Goliath? We can find out. Good luck to you. Thank you, Jack. Bonsai. Reggie came nearly 6,000 miles for this race. He loves it when his friends and family back home in Japan watch him. If you're watching from Japan, let us know down below in the comments. An epic tilt to kick off eliminations. Round number one of Top Fuel from the Man Cup Finals here at South Georgia Motorsports Park. Two will come to the line, only one will advance to the next round. We'll do that all day long until only one remains. Here we go. Takes the win. A little bit of a pedal fest out there. Congratulations, DJ. You are going on to round number two. What'd you think of that pass? Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> hey, it's a winning pass though, right? How many wins do you have in this sport? Who knows? Well, I know it's over 100, and I know you know sometimes it's just that proverbial one round at a time, huh? These fuel bikes can smoke the tires. Well, he rolled that Good luck to you guys. He's the legend. DJ going on to round two. Harley fans rejoice. We got a mega showdown coming up next. thrilling showdown between teammates. I'm sure these gentlemen would rather this happen in the final. Unfortunately for them, it happens in round one. There is Mitch Brown, your defending Man Cup champion. This team has been experimenting with the fuel tech system and tuner Todd Martin has really been getting a handle on it. As for Mitch, it's been a great season. He won the Norwalk night under fire. His colleagues have poked a little fun of him and given him a hard time saying he has a golden horseshoe. He certainly has had some favorable lucky breaks, but you can't say they haven't earned it. Continues. It looked close down there, didn't it? It looked really close. It looked like Mitch was by, a little bit a little behind at the hit. But you know, we struggled all weekend. I'm still learning at this deal. I learned a lot from actually those three aborted passes. We learned a lot of stuff, but we went back to what I knew and just tuned it a little bit. And I am so happy because now I will get to stay in the hotel room tonight and have to sleep in the lobby like I did last night. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know why he slept in the lobby, but guys, he's going to round two. Congratulations. 594 takes out a 621. Good job. Thanks, Mitch Brown's reign as champ continues. I thought it was over there for a second. Sammy was coming hard. Mitch gets the win. And here comes Chris Hand on race day. I love it. A giant showdown. Collectively as a group, the Top Fuel Motorcycle Racers decided to let Chris Hand race even though he didn't officially qualify. I love the decision. Great job, guys. The question for Team Yellow Bullet is will this motorcycle go straight? If it does, they know they've got 570 potential, but they have got to keep it straight down the groove. It's been a problem, and you know it's on Dave's mind, and it's got to be on his crew's mind as well. 
If you think it's easy to drive one of these things, think again, guys. 1,500 horsepower and nitromethane can have a mind of its own. Dave is one of the most skilled riders on the planet. He makes it look easy, but sometimes these things can get out of control in a hurry. Here we go. Nice and straight, Vantine fights a wobble. He won't cross this time. Top end of the racetrack, Dave Vantine, 583, wow. 583, congratulations, that'll get you to round two. A little bit wobbly out there, but boy, that was trucking. Congratulations, guys, one number at a time. Greg, Greg, I gotta ask you. You guys have been remarkably consistent, but with two passes crossing the center line, how nervous were you there? A little bit nervous, but I mean, you know, today's another day. We got to get our head on straight. Look at what if it was something mechanical, and then uh, go back at it. You know. Congratulations! You're in the running for a championship, there, buddy. Dave Vantine hunting down championship number one. Well, Sharon, we got to say congratulations. Persistence pays off. It looked like Chris wasn't going to qualify. They get him in there at 622. Yep. All things considered, a very nice pass. I appreciate. Yeah, thank you for saying that. But I appreciate the, the top fuel as a whole. We, this is the class that, class, and they are, they're classy people. And had it not been for Top Fuel, the riders and the, and the crew and everything, we wouldn't have been able to ride, run today because, you know, honestly, we didn't qualify yesterday. And it's because of the good people that that make up this class. And, it, and it's because, and thank you, Jay, you got for it. doing that. But, but we have good people. We race with good people. We still race each other. We all, you know, we all, everybody wants to win. But at the end of the day, everybody is good people and it, we're family. Good season. Good season. We want to see you back out there next season. How about it, guys? Persistence pays off. Chris Hand almost pulls a rabbit out of his hat. Dave Vantine in line for a first championship. We got a battle. Sit back, relax. Round two's coming up. make these forks want to put bind pressure against them. Somebody was having a good time. They're gone. They're gone. They're passed out. Oh boy. What's up guys? There, that, that wasn't you guys drinking that Ciroc, was it? No, no. That was yesterday. Vic, you winning? Yeah. Nice. Well, now we know what they like to drink while watching Cycle Drag, and we're set for a pressure-filled epic round number two. But before we go any further, let's flash back to one year ago as the 20-time champion. Larry Spider-Man McBride made history once again. So many of you have asked, where's Spider-Man? When's he coming back? He had a knee replacement and then some serious health issues. But the good news is Larry is here as a spectator. We hope to have him back as a racer real soon. And this was the fastest run of all time. How about a 265 for you? Let's talk to the Spider-Man. You're going to see Dave run around the 570, 578, 79, somewhere in that neighborhood. He's got the same tune up he had yesterday, so I think he'll be just fine. Well, it's going to be exciting. Thank you, Larry. I can't, can't wait. wait to see you back. You feeling better? Yeah, feeling better. Getting better, man. Being at the racetrack makes me feel better. So um, I see they're getting ready to prep the track and get it all ready for these hopped up guys. I'm just being here has been tough, man. It's uh I love to see everybody, but not being able to race is uh, is another story. So. Well, we'll see you back here soon. Nobody's been quicker, faster than you. 550, guys, you saw it on Cycle Drag, 265 miles an hour. And I'm hearing you think when you bring that bike out, it's got more left in it? Oh, no question about it. I mean, uh, absolutely. We've done, my brother has done a lot of work over the winter and uh, over the last COVID year. And, over 2021 while i've been sick you know he's done a lot of work we've made a lot of new parts a lot improved some stuff uh sometimes you make improvements you slow down we don't think we went that direction so the only thing that's going to tell us when we bring it to the racetrack and put it down the racetrack see what it does get well spider-man we can't wait to have you back and see more of this guys help us wish him a speedy recovery down below in the comments because you know larry mcbride has certainly dazzled fans over the years here at South Georgia Motorsports Park. One of the longest tracks in the country, one of the smoothest tracks in the country. The question is, who will take advantage of that and step up in McBride's absence? Here comes Reggie Sato and Mitch Brown for an epic round two showdown with a championship hanging in the balance. So much at stake. Let's get it on. This is it, our semi-final at the Fuel Tech Man Cup Finals. Brought to you by 190 Hookup and MTC. Guys, Mitch Brown looking to keep the number one on this motorcycle. 
Reggie with the Nitro Funny Bike. He's been doing a great job. Japan versus the USA, we got a battle. Mitch with a big pop, a big pop. We got ourselves a race top and Mitch gets there first, wow. Mitch, he blew it up, the horseshoe. The horseshoe, oh my God. Cycle drag, we have to take another look at this. We told you, sometimes top fuel motorcycle goes wrong, a big pop. Mitch blows it up, Reggie out in front. Mitch at the very end is able to catch him with a 684, wow. Wow, Todd, what a drag race. So, yeah, uh, I think we sacrificed one there. We kind of, you know, haven't ran in this condition yet, but uh, you know, he said go for it. We went for it. He did a hell of a job driving that thing. It set the front end down, smoked the tire. He jabbed it again and got back around him. That's all on Mitch, man. He, he that was a hell of a pass he made right there. Now the attention turns to Team Vantine on this buy run. Can the Yellow Bullet beat a 684 for lane choice in the final? We're about to find out. Takes the tree under power, strong launch, drifting left. Oh no, oh no, Dave does take out a foam block. This is a disaster for the team out of New York. Guys, I hate to say it, I hate to say it. I think, I think Dave is disqualified. I think Mitch Brown just won this race. Dave is disqualified, I believe, for hitting the cone. What a crazy ending, we'll have to get official word. Let's take another look and see where this went wrong. Vantine drifts left. Now we do know NHRA and Man Cup rules differ slightly. We do know there was a bit of a loophole with Chris Hand. Not exactly sure how this is going to play out. Let's get on top of it for you. So we're waiting on official Man Cup rules. We believe crossing the center line, unfortunately. It is a DQ. That's, that's what we believe. Oh my goodness, yep. tough way. It, well, we'll find out. We'll, we'll see. Guys, we'll see what happens. That's crazy. Now, for anyone out there that says, why didn't Dave steer away? Keep in mind, these motorcycles are more than a thousand pounds. They don't handle well. When they want to go a certain way, they go. We'll wait to get official word from Jay Regan. We think Van Tine is disqualified, but Steve, that could be not only how he lost the race, but how he lost the championship. Exactly. Devastating. Exactly. What, what did you see there where it just seemed like he wasn't able to bring it back? I think he was pointing slightly towards the center and it went that way and he just couldn't bring it back. Very interesting. Let us know what you see. Is the motorcycle lined up crooked? Is something mechanically failing on the bike? Or is it something the rider is or isn't doing? Let us know down below in the comments. I have no earthly idea, but I do know this. These big, heavy, top fuel motorcycles are a lot harder to navigate than they look. And we do have an update for all the fans here at South Georgia Motorsports Park and everybody watching on Cycle Drag. Unfortunately, this will be a heart-crushing ending for Team Vantine to their season because in the Man Cup rulebook, under general regulations, President Jay Regan points out that it does state if a racer contacts the wall or hits the boundary or takes out the timing equipment during eliminations, 
That rider is subject to disqualification. Now, this is where this gets a little dicey and controversial because we also checked in the NHRA rule book. And believe it or not, the NHRA rule book states on single runs in situations where a driver is making a solo, he or she is considered the winner once he or she stages and receives the start signal and is declared the winner by the official starter. If a competitor crosses the boundary line on a single run, the elapsed time is voided for lane choice. We also asked Bill Bader of Norwalk about this, and his policy is right in line with NHRA. He said, once you take the tree under power, there is no way to lose on a buy run. So technically here, Jay Regan of the Man Cup, living by the letter of the law, making the right call on his rule book. But now we can have some fun down in the comments and debate whether or not that rule makes any sense and if it needs to be changed. Because follow me on this one. If it is the goal of a sanctioning body to have great side-by-side -side races for all the spectators, you don't want to buy followed by another buy. Now, the great Mike Dunn points out to us that this was once a role in the NHRA made famous by Ron Colson back in the 1978 U.S. Nationals. He was thrown out. But NHRA has since changed the rule to where if you take the tree under power, there is no way to lose on a buy run. It doesn't matter if you brush the wall. It doesn't matter if you cross the center line. Dave Bantine was under that assumption when he made this pass, but here's another issue, the flexibility of the rule book. We did let Chris hand in, showing that it's not ironclad, and then you have this one, the buy run procedure, where all Vantine had to do in the Man Cup was go up to the tower and say he didn't want to make a pass. In that case, you don't even have to take the tree under power, which is quite different than the NHRA rules, and I'm sure is something Dave Vantine wishes in retrospect he would have done. We talked to the great Brett Kepner, a historian of the sport, and asked him, when did this NHRA rule change? He's not exactly sure. He thinks it was sometime in the mid-80s. So the question now is, will Man Cup change their rule to fall in line with NHRA? And should they? Now, on the other side of that coin, you could have somebody who is super safety conscious saying even during a buy run here in motorcycle drag racing, you have to be able to control your motorcycle. Others would argue if you don't even need to make a buy run, how could you get thrown out? Let us know what you think down below. What we do know here is unfortunately we're going to see a buy run in the final, but let us not forget what happened to Mitch Brown moments ago. This team has to thrash a big boomer. Let's check in in the pit area and wait till you see the hole in this monster block. out of this machine you can see Todd looking over data. I did not. Where's it at? Right under the number one cylinder exhaust. Let's take a look guys. I'm taking the inside of the sport here. Inside's a good call because Mitch is going to win this race unless he crosses the center line. Who knows? Let's get to our top field final. I'm starting to believe in this golden horseshoe, but hats off to this team. They put themselves in a position to win. Well, Ty, 2190 at 40 miles an hour, probably not the way you want to celebrate, but that horseshoe's real. Mitch just won his second straight Man Cup title. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, the guys worked hard. We had to change the motor, give it three rounds and everything. Uh, we got a lot of stuff still to learn, but the fuel tech and uh, the whole team came together this weekend. We did get lucky to you know, win another championship. We'd love to see you know, Van Tine and those guys in another lane, but you know, that's how it goes. Uh, we had a solo, so I thought, you know, we'll swing for the fence. Uh, I'd have probably backed it up a little bit if he was over there, but uh, 
Hey, uh, great job to the whole staff here at SGMP and everything. And, uh, of course, you for uh, Cycle Drag. Keep promoting uh, our sport like you do every night out here. It's a great time. You get a chance to come out to one of these events. Congratulations. Thanks, man. They're the Man Cup champions. Let's congratulate them down below in the comments. And let's take one more look at the driving job that won Mitch Brown the race. Bravo, Mitch. Congratulations. That's it, guys. Another Man Cup Finals in the books. That is it. If you like that video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. Be a friend. Tell a friend. From South Georgia Motorsports Park, Cycle Drag rolls on.